Greetings, everyone. Lumberg here, excited to bring to you season nine of Global Conquest matchup algorithm prediction spreadsheet that is attached in the link, as well as covering some of the basics of Global Conquest and give you an overview of and my thoughts. Let's go ahead and dive in. So attached, you will find the Global Conquest spreadsheet. And if you've watched my videos before, I like to do this for most of the Global Conquests. And here, you can see this is a summary of all the groups that we have. This time it remained similar, meaning the groups are at 32. So this is actually a fair and pretty, you know, kind of non uh, meddling way of doing the matchup, meaning Camel didn't, you know, do a conspiracy to match you with lock nations or unlock nations or difficult worlds. It really does follow a algorithm. And that's what I've done here. All I've done, it's it's not really a difficult process. I've observed kind of the matchups over a couple of different global conquests and replicated that and can predict with fairly certain accuracy, about 90% assurance that these matchup predictions will be right. So how do you use this? Pretty simple. All the worlds um, are listed here. There's a tab for every single group. That means if let's say you're in nation 209, you will be in this group one, which is one to 298. The first uh, tab here of information is saying what's the latest merger status of this. The second one here tells you how many nations went into these mergers. You can see the history of these nations, you know, similar to my um, merger master list that has kind of all the history. And if you look at this history tab, scroll down here in this yellow box, there is a uh, note of some instructions. Let's say, hey, I want to find out, you know, all the nations that went into, let's say, nation 30. So you can hit clear and just select 30 and then you'll see, oh, here's all the 20 nations that went to th went into 30. So that's it. If I've shown you that before. If you have any questions, feel free to, you know, send me a note and I'll be happy to help or give you a screenshot if you're not very good with spreadsheets and can't access this document or don't have, you know, Google Sheets. Um, so there's 12 groups of 32. Um, it expanded from 863 last season to 974 this season. And it's season nine. It's not season nine for everyone. You can see here, I've, I really tried to do a, um, my best job about listing kind of who the winners were for each of these rounds. However, what I've found is that when you go into your global conquest menu, like we went here and you go into your rank and you can see this um, in after rank, if you look at history, it kind of shows you all this history here, right? So you can see here, because there was two seasons that we didn't have in 285, because it's a, you know, it's not one of the oldest worlds. This is our sixth season, but you know, for everybody else in the oldest world, Nation One, it's going to be the ninth season. But sometimes these order, like what they call season one, season two, is not in order. So even though they will list this here, so I had a hard time trying to come up with this list of. And, and really some of it was guessing work. So if you can remember that, wait a minute, in this first season, you know, it wasn't world two that weren't, it was world 30 and I might need to flip flop. Please do let me do and I'll correct that. So especially the ones where the groupings are the same. So for example, you know, oh wait, uh, world 175 to world 261 is present in season one, season two, season three, and season six so it's hard to know which one when we don't can't know the order that camel put it's hard to know which one of these are right so if you see anything that looks wrong here please let me know and i will fix it all right so that history i think is kind of important to see and this is a new edition that i didn't really kind of um, have this before but i think it is important to see look at the domination of some of these lock nations so green here means unlocked red means locked what happens in a lock nation um, is that they usually get mergers more um, frequently and quicker than unlock nations. And this is the first time, really, they can't really compete. They don't have much of a strategic advantage in void because, you know, you can outperform the more players, but in global conquest, it really is hard to kind of get past that BP, uh, the massive spending and the and just more people. Um, and you can clearly see that, look, you know, there was no lock nations here. Then it started having lock nations. And then there's just some dominations where like, you know, all participants are lock nations in like the 600 world. You know, no surprise. You've seen some of the monsters in these nations. I mean, I think the, the big guy in 693 ran out of like um, troops. Like th there's camel, 
he reached the peak. Nobody expected him, I guess, in Camel to reach that many troops. And so I'm sure they increased the cap for him. So back to the spreadsheet. So if you wanted to know which worlds go into it, you can look at the, the, the my lookup spreadsheet. This tells you lock status, not really relevant for the um, earlier worlds, but later when you go into some of these other worlds, you'll see, yep, it does help to know which one's locked, which one's not unlocked. And here you can clearly see the, the, the disadvantage that unlocked nations have. And, and you can see also a trend where, you know, it used to be three merger nations. Camel, of course, has changed to two. So you'll see that, look, there's, there's two nations here. Um, some of these are seven and eight instead of nine because, you know, even for the locked nations, they also moved to like um, two mergers, two, two world mergers. So back to um, the, you know, my nation and 285 and my group, um, the, the next two columns you can kind of ignore. This will be updated if I get a chance, you know, once the first um, preliminary is done and ranking is done. But, you know, this is just number in chronological order. And really, this is where I want to show you how the algorithm works is just this this color-coded logic here. So there is no, um, unless Camel changes the logic uh, for a specific matchup, and um, I can tell you that um, this, I checked every single matchup here, and the algorithm predicted it correctly for round one. So that gives me more confidence. And that, all it simply does, you can see that, look, it, it takes all of the nations in chronological order, uses this, um, uses this grouping right here, to, to figure out the map, uh, to figure out the, uh, the, the rounds and it stays pretty consistent. So that's, that's, that's the guts of the algorithm. Um, and these color coding just means that, you know, you, you group them together. Let's collapse that, uh, season points and GC points will be updated after, you know, the matches happen. You can ignore this column schedule of strength because, you know, it's not relevant. I don't know who's ranked where I just said, look, just ranked you know, in chronological order, just one to 32, um, just a simple assumption. So here's the, here's the matchups. Everybody already knows this now because it's published. This is where the value comes in. So let's say I am nation, um, 209, right? So if you look at nation 209, let's highlight that. And I want to see who am I matching with in the second preliminary. So 209, will get 113, 114 and 278 for the second preliminary. For the third preliminary, they'll get 72, 183, and 285. So that is, I am fairly certain that's gonna happen unless you know something is tweaked by Camel manually you know, from this algorithm. So why is this helpful? Why do you even care? Because it really does help you in terms of like, you know, hey, look, I have a, if, if you want to qualify uh, you know, for the next round, round of 16, and um, you wanna know who your future opponents are, and if you see, look, I may have a matchup where I think I can beat these guys or I can't beat those guys. So I really have to focus on these ones. And it really helps you kind of plan out your battle. You know, you need to, let's say, win one, come second place in one and, you know, third place in the other, and then you'll qualify. If, if you have some kind of strategy like that, it will really help you kind of maximize that outcome if you know these opponents ahead of time. Of course, you know, it's a pretty simple uh, logic and algorithm and Camel could have told us, you know, the, the matchup ahead of time and, and allowed us to, to plan just like in college football. Let's say, for example, you know the, who you're going to be, who your opponents are going to be, you know, from the start of the season. So same thing here, Global Conquest season, it would be helpful if you know kind of who your uh, opponents are. And this is what I've done. I've equalized that and made it kind of easy for people to, to do that planning. So it's really a public service. Um, because I've done it for all nations, right? So um, I haven't checked all of the nations. So I did some like, you know, so the, what the green color here means is that I validated that, yep, the algorithm predicted these correctly to just give, build my confidence. So I pick, ch I check it for, um, you know, one group, 100%, and then I just do spot checks here. So right here, spot checks, and the spot checks go lower and lower because I get more and more confident that everything is being predicted right. And you can see here, so all of the greens here means that just simply that I've checked it. I've logged into a spy nation and checked that that logic makes sense. Um, and really, that's it. Um, what I will request is that it will be pretty daunting for me to update this as the season progresses. So, you know, there's been some awesome people who have uh, helped me out in the past before, just because remember, it's just me. Um, I don't, I can't, you know, 
I can't, I, I don't have fancy, uh, you know, crawl bots that can go and get some of this information or convert the picture to, to, to numbers and drop it in automatically. I basically have to type things in. If you guys um, are doing this or are able to help or are doing your own world analysis and want to share that with me, you know, please reach out to me on, you know, line, discord, um, YouTube, um, you know, in the comment section. And if you can take a, 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 you know, one of the groups and update either the points, um, you, you know, either, either the points or the nation BP, what's the nation BP. So if you come back into your global conquest menu here and you click on a nation here, like look at nation 33, See, it tells you this, this nation BP. Well, really, it's not exactly nation BP, but it's the top 10 alliance BP. So, you know, it, this information I like to plug in here. So obviously, I haven't done that yet um, because I, I finished this before, you know, that data was available. It just became available, you know, today. Um, here, you can see, oh, there's nation 33, and I dropped in that BP. Of course, this is kind of dynamic, so it changes. So somebody, some people built some troops, so you see that number slightly different. So it's a live number, but it shouldn't change that much um, unless you have a void or a frenzy between then, and then it might change a good bit. But so I'm looking for volunteers throughout the Global Conquest season that either would like write access to the spreadsheet and kind of go in and update, you know, these three columns, the, the BP, the season points and the GC points, just because I have so many nations that I can't keep up with just one person um, that's doing this really for fun and for helping out the players. So that is my request. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, best of luck. I love Global Conquest. You know, I like the strategy of it. Um, I, I kind of like, um, you know, really the big battles, the big scale battles and, um, you know, just just you know, the real strategy of where you port, who you attack, um, who do you ally with in later rounds. So it's a lot of fun. Um, that being said, you know, if you're one of these um, nations that are in a situation where you're facing, you know, the locked nations, it gets a little tricky, as you can see here, for example. Um, there's, you know, these poor nations that are not merged versus the merged nations, you know, they're going to have a tough time, right? So it's no fun being in a global conquest where the odds are against you. And nobody really did this on purpose. It's just a matter of, you know, you didn't get a merger yet. And so you can see it's sequential. The logic stays the same, but nonetheless, it, it, it doesn't take away the fact that it's really unfair and it sucks. It also sucks here because you can see here that, look, some of these nations actually have mergers and some of them don't so they all have an unfair advantage but that doesn't mean that you can't overcome those difficulties you just have to you know come together do some strategy about you know who goes into what alliance how you're going to um, coordinate how many people can you get online it doesn't matter how strong or how many uh, how active the nation is if they can't work together you're not going to win global conquest um, but really you can see here a huge advantage to the locked nations because they've gotten mergers while nobody of the unlocked nations have gotten it one of the um, one of the fairest matchups is probably here because you can see everybody is well except there's one there's one merger there. Um, I guess this one. This is the fairest matchup because everybody is unmerged, right? And that's one of the things that I've noticed that you know if you look at it here, um, when so towards the end when when most of the worlds are not merged they kind of have an even chance so you can see here look the odds are a little bit more even um, in this middle part where you know they get a few more frequency of mergers you see more unlocked nations but in this early you know in the parts where the the newer nations none of the locked or unlocked have gotten a merger that's where it's fairest but there's there's anomalies you can see here that this group three all of these nations were unmerged, so they didn't really have an advantage. They're just stronger in this case, or you know, able to show up. Um, that's it. the The link will be in the description below. Um, again, if you can't access spreadsheets or you're not comfortable with kind of navigating it, and you want to spread uh, a screenshot of this, let me know, um, and I will be happy to to help you out. Hopefully, you found this video um, and this spreadsheet helpful. Uh, if you can, spread the word, uh, spread my channel, um, like, comment, and that helps my channel. Thank you. Have a 
good luck to you guys um, in your upcoming global conquest this weekend. Take care.